And as soon as we had a vacant engine stand, a new engine comes along. It's a B16B from a Civic Type R engine. It's going to have a stroke crank from, from a B18C ITR crank. And of course, a race modded rods and the air intake manifold. The rare and no longer available intake manifold. And of course, we'll discuss about fitting the ITR crank onto the B16B and show you guys what to check and what you have to check for better clearances. So, hey, let's go. Let's go. And here we move the engine stand of the B20 VTEC and then put the B16B and look at that. It's a B16B CTR engine with it. Of course, CTR pistons. Duh b16b yep number one type r all right so now let's go to the workbench and show you the plan for this engine let's go and here we are look at this the acl race bearings the air induction research carbon fiber intake manifold yeah and the itr crank because we're gonna stroke this B16B to an 1800. And of course the race modded rods, we'll talk about that a little later. But now let's go to the intake manifold. This is actually the only one in the country. This is a, a, an intake manifold from air induction research that's no longer available. And look at the taper. When I port manifold, people wonder how much taper. Look at this taper. That's gonna be over the intake manifold that we could port. This is perfect. This is actually owned originally by Bong Hilario of H3 Autoworks. This is the same intake manifold that first cracked into the 10 second barrier in all motor form. In our country, of course. It has 68 millimeter bore, so the taper is gonna be good. Bong ordered this from Endyne way, way back, and hey, it works, because it works. This rates mod, modded rods, sorry. We're gonna talk about that more. But let's look at the intake manifold a little closer now. As you can see here, you guys notice when I port intake manifolds, I try to flare up the opening so it's like a velocity stack. Look at this. It's like a perfect velocity stack on the mold, right? Oh yeah. And look at the taper. The taper is just awesome. So you know, this is gonna have really, really good airspeed. And of course, the plenum volume is substantial, so hey, you won't ever run out of top end power, right? Yep. So before we get to the rods, let's talk about the setup first. It's 81.77.4 as the B16B, but we're going to stroke it to 87.2 with the B18C crank. Here it is going to have a fully ported PR3 head that we're going to port, of course, SuperTech valve train blocks b camshaft the owner got it used but had the box and the cam card so he's gonna send me the cam card that's gonna be really important to degree this with you guys the itr crank of course and idr rods the air induction intake by endyne or from endyne and a 4-1 header with a 2.5 inch collector we'll talk about the tricks and stuff that we do so let's go that includes shooting for a compression ratio of between 12.8 is to 1 or until almost 13 is to 1 compression because it's going to run pump gas. And this is going to be for hill climb purposes. The owner wants to daily drive this car or this engine, but take it to a hill climb event. So this is going to be really, really cool. We're going to talk about the rod modifications that we do. And of course, the other things that could help or would help gain better efficiency so now let's go to the rods let's go let's go so yeah forgot to show this but i already mentioned it earlier here it is the super tech valve train this is what we always use even on pro 2 or pro 3 cams of course you can actually use the skunk 2 proper branded valve train for the camshaft but this never got us wrong and we always use ferrea viton valve seals right or any brand viton valve seals but of course since this is super tech let's use super tech you know let's let's stick to one brand yeah so that you know so if there is ever a purist when it comes to aftermarket parts there you go super tech valve train and super tech valve seals okay we're gonna use gloves because the polished beams on the idr rods catches rust easily when you hold it with bare hands Okay, we're gonna show you what we did here and all the work that we did, all right? So now onto the rods. 
here let's move this with the gloves on all right let's move this here to the center let me show you this and here if you've heard way before or way back the people would always say polished beam on the rods and this is the beam so we polished it this gives a bit more strength and of course durability and here you can see we got it fully polished to a to a good shine here you can see we markered this with the stamped it number four on the rods and the caps this way when i when i was polishing it i won't be able to mix them uh mix and match them improperly so you can see you can actually see the beam is actually polished removed all the wrinkles and whatnot that could actually lead to future cracks or you know shortcomings or the weaknesses here it's stamped number three uh, sorry you can't see it properly but yeah we stamped it there and there and the cap all right yeah you can see the beams are polished really good actually you know to be honest without even chopping or you know carving much on the rods this actually saves us at least 80 or 70 to 80 grams that's huge savings right right here you can see the number two stamped of course yep and here you can see wait let me show you the other one wait wait where is it oh here okay let me show you here you can see it's factory rod bolts that stretch that's good and that's only on type r's and if you can actually click here on the rod bolt stretch video that we did way before actually it'll be in the description below we got b-roll of a video of the honda factory assembling the type r Now they stretched it and that's the itr crank of course yep let's take off the gloves all right and after we show you when we gonna drop the crank onto the black to show onto the block to show you the things that you need to check when stroking it up we'll talk more about these rods and the story behind it all right let's go to the engine stand now now here is my colleague disassembling the block and you can see the honing marks are pretty good but the carbon buildup is thick on the domes of the pistons all the way up to the top ring level so yep this has been running rich or not tuned well so and here you can see because the owner bought this locally that's all already been used you can see it's actually been rebuilt because look at that we don't use red silicone sealant it just looks like kids built it you know so yep we know this has not has been touched not just from the factory all right there but you know Props to the previous owner that sold this to the to our customer because this has been taken care of because look, it's pretty clean with good oil change. Yep. All right, here we are now without the crank with the B16B crank we removed and you can see it's in pretty good condition and you know it's been rebuilt because the bearings are pretty good. And over here, we're going to talk about the breather system because it has a factory breather here. And so the other one here, we can actually add and we'll talk about that along the way. So now let's install the ITR crank, the B18C crank. Okay, to show you guys the things that you should check and of course oh wait oh it's surprising all right so let me show you guys closer now you can see when we turn the crank over here look you see the oil jet it's actually almost gonna hit the counterweight and you can see wait let's pause it here so in some cranks or even a, on a b20 crank you might hit that and you have to twist the oil jet let's look at the other one the piston number two now here to see it better oh there you can see this better you can see here you're trying to spin it it's not touching so it's pretty safe but a lot of times this touches and so you have to either turn it or something but of course when you're running forged pistons you plug this so it's no problem but this one now it tells me this ran an 89 crank or an itr crank before that's probably why it's not tuned properly when they took it back to stock and you know it's very common practice here locally like 
it, it probably had an 87.2 ITR crank or an 89B20 crank here. And so that's why the oil jet is already moved safely. And that's probably tuned well. And so when they were selling the engine or the B16B, they put it back to stock and probably not retune it properly. That's why it's probably running so rich, right? But hey, the engine is in good condition. It's just something that I wanted to share just for more, more awareness for everyone that's buying engines that's already used by others, not straight from the factory untouched. So, hey, it's worth noting, right? And that's probably why it has red silicone sealant. They had to put it back to stock real quick to sell it. But hey, it's a good engine. Okay, now let's go back to the workbench. Let's talk about the rods here. Here we do the polished beams, and we call this our race mod to the factory rods. And I've I've always, as a kid, I've always heard about polished beams and balance and all that until, you know, I got more details and learned about it because as I talked to the late Don Flores, also known as Don F in Honda Tech, we used to private message all the time and even email because he used to race in the SCCA GT4 class against King Motorsports slash Mugen CRX. And so when the, the retired the car, the CRX, as a driver of the King Motorsports bought the engine or the CRX itself, he approached Don F to rebuild it. And guess what? Don F shared to me what he found on the Mugen D16A6, this engine here. And look at the rods. These are the Mugen D16A6 connecting rods. This is good for 218 brake horsepower. That's crazy, right? And you know what's more interesting is that I talked to this guy named Udo Becker. He's from Germany. He's a builder for a VW scene for like Type 4s and Type 1s. And he's been racing since the 80s. And he did tell me back in the 80s, they used to build engines with limited parts. And this is what they did. Now that's a factory type one VW connecting rod. They just polish the beams and all the everything on the areas and get it smooth. Just like what I do on the ITR rods, right? And the thing here is you get to balance it and actually we balance it end for end for the big end and the small end. And also I believe the polishing also helps shed off oil. This way the whole component is always maintained light, you know? And of course, maybe we should actually do a a video about race mod on a factory rods you know B because of course if you need the aftermarket like for example if you're going turbo you have to go each beam you know it's way stronger and even aluminum rods but the thing is if you're building an engine that's all motor and of course you're not you know doing much racing or like it's not really like totally full race the factory rods are lighter by 80 grams or 90 grams than the h beam so you're actually defeating the purpose of running lighter pistons but heavier rods right and another thing worth mentioning is look at this this is drag cartels build look at this you can see the rods has a gold coating that's probably oil shed coating you know so it doesn't stick but that's the same purpose of polishing right but don't forget look at the crank that is smooth right so hey it might be working it's just that nobody talks about it right we're just sharing it here and also look at this if you guys remember ecu later or jasper's EF that runs 12.5s, that this is what I did to the crank. And of course, I don't have the pictures, unfortunately, but his B20 rods are equally polished just like this. So hey, maybe that's also one of the small reasons why it runs 12.5s easily on all steel and all glass and pump gas, right? And of course, my own D16A6 is not exempted. It also has the same polished rods, just like the Mugen. So hey, hopefully when we get to rebuild this or do a series about this engine, we can show you guys everything. So of course, we're going to be balancing the PCT Type R pistons for this B16B stroker build and show you the balance on these rods and also show you guys the fitment of the ITR crank. So, hey, that's going to be good, right? So, you know, you have to hit the like button so this video gets spread out to a wider audience. And so, of course, subscribe so that, you know, when we're done with the next episode, you can actually get notified to check it out on the new stuff when it's out, right? And as soon as we get finished with the next one, you can also just click it here.